We have a very interesting weldment today. Very clean, nice parts to work with. So we cut these rings out. We got these sprockets. We're gonna clean up, weld see per our drawing here. And uh, yeah, I'll give a little step by step here. Nothing too major. Yeah, so these sprockets fit absolutely perfectly. You have to push them down on four corners to get them to go on there, but they slide just perfectly. So I'm gonna take it back off and clean it up for the weld, and then I'll put it in place. That looks to me like a 520 sprocket, the same exact sprockets we used to run on our sprint cars, uh, the micro sprints I used to run. Well, this being steel, the ones we ran were aluminum, of course, but uh, yeah, that's the exact same pitch and everything. All right, give it a series of tacks. And then this one gets a 1 8 weld all the way around. Everything we're doing, we're doing in stages of two. So we gotta do it twice. We're making two of them. Now if that were any tighter, I would've had to heat this sprocket up with a torch to put it on. But I don't want to have to do that because simply for the fact that this sprocket is about quarter inch thick and it could stand the chance of warping a little bit. Uh, but some might say, oh, just kind of take a little bit out of the inside of the sprocket. No, I want this thing fitting as tight as freaking possible without scarring the finish. Okay, so now it's time to start tacking. I'm going to do eight tacks with this 045 wire. I do small tacks because I'm going to do welds over it, but each, with each tack, I'll do one, crossover, two, three, same on, so on and so forth. I'm not going to film too much of the doubles because that would just be redundant. Yeah, I'll get those tacked in each time. Each time I tack one, I'll come over here, I'll have a clamp on this side, then I'll get the other tack and then kind of spank it with the hammer with each time I go around, so on and so forth. When you're doing high precision welding, like TIG welding on specialty parts like this with close tolerance, tacking should always be treated like a torquing sequence. That was 
150 amps, I'm going to go up to 160 amps and go with a 332nd rod and try that and see how it comes out. Okay, I found its happy spot. So that's going to work right there. That is 332nd. I had to go up to 175 on the amp, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I started out at 150 and I was not quite happy with that. You can see how the steps were just not as consistent as I wanted. I had to spend a little more time on it. And then I went up to 175 and I'm able to move at the pace that I want to move and get the ripples just right that I like. And I'm going to show you how I'm holding that torch. I'm holding it at this angle right here and that, and that amount of stick out. And I'm, I've got the foot pedal all the way down. I'm not pulsing or anything. I'm just moving it step, 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 just like that. Always get comfortable and do a dry run first. Proper prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Take your time. If somebody's rushing you, find another job. So, in case you're wondering, I got this standing on some little blocks there to support it, to keep it from rocking back and forth while I'm welding. Everything plays a factor in making welds like this. That's why rod choice and heat, everything is such an important factor, not just one single thing. One other key thing, do not start welding until you are 100% comfortable with everything you're fixing to do. You got to remember, you got to make every step exactly like you did before. And what I'm doing is I'm laying the torch and giving it a push angle like this, but I'm laying the cup actually on the pipe and just dragging it, just like so. And I'm following my hand around with it ever so comfortably and just making nice, consistent steps. Each step exactly the same. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, 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 so on and so forth, just like that. But prep is everything. Like painting a car, 90% of it is preparation. The rest is experience. When I say everything is a factor, I mean every single thing. From where you hold this so that it doesn't get too, too hot on your hand, where you're holding your, or feeding your wire in, the consistency of when you're feeding your wire in, and to where you're sharpening your tungsten, how much tungsten you got stuck out, your angle, the application, watching it fill in, making each one of those steps exactly consistent as the one before. All that plays a factor. All right, guys, the first part and the first sprocket is finished. So we'll move on to the next sprocket. Again, take your time, let the part cool a little bit. Don't rush the part.
Okay, so now I'll weld the second one out. I won't show everything about the second one. It just when it's done, unless there's something I can think of that's germane to this video. German's got nothing to do with it. And uh, show the steps the rest of the way through. Okay, I do feel it pertinent to tell you that I am feeding this from the bottom like this, right into the well. Not really running into the puddle, but just running up to the front of the puddle and then letting it, all this will fill up at the same time. But that's controlled by the angle of my torch. If I didn't have my angle, if I didn't have the angle of the torch pushing, then that wouldn't happen so much. But with it pushing, you can just push the rod to the very front of the puddle and it will just basically suck the rest of the weld into a puddle right there. Okay, I'm going to try to explain myself a little bit better. I don't know if I was getting that completely across or not, but uh, sometimes it's pretty hard to explain these details and even though if I film it, uh, I need better camera equipment to be able to film it first off, but what I'm doing is I got the torch. I'll go ahead and Treat this as the tungsten right here, I, I, I'm, as I'm pointing at this circle right here, this puddle, okay? When I start my next weld, I will arc up on this puddle and make that molten uh, like water again without moving outside this puddle. That way it makes all the weld look as close to the same as possible. And when I start to move, I take the rod and I push right in here in this little groove. I'm like sliding it back and forth in this groove. And as it starts to melt, I just kind of push into it and it starts to hump up and make this nice little circle there. Same thing, that's what you gotta watch for each time you move. You move forward a little bit and then you push into it. Move forward a little bit, push into it, push into it. So I'm not actually running my rod up into the puddle. I'm running it in the, at the front of the puddle and it's becoming the puddle. Be the puddle, my friend. Okay, and that finishes our sprocket, so. Now we'll measure our Z height on here. Make sure we got the exact same thing. Okay, so at this point, we're looking at the cross cut here and I'm looking at what's my options here. I have not built this part in the past. This is my first time building this part. So this is what we just welded on right here, this sprocket. So now we're going to be welding these parts on. This is the ring that goes around, and this is the other ring that goes that way, and this is that ring that goes that way. <laughs> you'll, you'll see whenever we get it welded together, but I'm exploring my options. What's the best way to weld this? Should I weld this on first, just tack it on first? I'm thinking it's going to draw because we're not putting a weld over here. So we need to have some kind of structural integrity, and we're not going to get that even by putting this one and this one on because there's nothing attaching it here. This is just uh, tells what the thickness is of this material which to us at this point does not matter anything because all this is already made. So I'm going to tack this. I might, I'm might. i going to look at tacking this and this on first and see what kind of clearance I have in here to tack this in. But it looks like I'm going to need to put a spacer in between here and a clamp and maybe maybe bolt it down or just clamp it up pretty good. I'm not sure yet. Let's, let's dive into this. When I know something, you'll know something. Okay, so according to this, 
That space is 5.8. I'm gonna come in here with a 5.8 spacer, which is this right here. Put a 5.8 spacer in there and in there. And I'll go do a series of tacks all the way around. And then with this one clamped down, I'll move it back just a little bit more and that's where I'll put the weld. All right, as luck would have it, I got two 5.8 spacers that were cut out on the water jet the other day. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, I think that's how we're gonna do it. We'll weld a little bit, let it cool, and then move around, weld a little bit more, let it cool, move around, so on and so forth. This will take quite a bit more time. But being as how thin this is, I don't want to rush it. Just like that, do it all the way around. If you're thinking that the weld looks a little bit cooler than before, it's because it is. I went down to 155 amps. 